persecuted in their own country, these Tibetan monks are continuing in exile in northern India, a tradition of ancient spiritual practices which dates back 17,000 years. It is known as Bon Buddhism. All Buddhists believe that the material world is a dreamlike illusion into which they are born and reborn. It is an endless cycle of reincarnation, which can only be broken through profound spiritual enlightenment. This enlightenment is a mystical state they call clear light. For these monks, it can be achieved through strict mental disciplines, chanting, prayer, and meditation during the day, and in sleep, special exercises to understand the true nature of dreams. In Buddhism, we believe that Every phenomena, no matter if you're awake or you're sleeping, it's like a dream. If you understand the dream is not real, dream and the waking states become the same thing. Tenzin Wangyal Rinpoche is the reincarnation of a 7th century Tibetan Lama, or teacher. After several years teaching in the West, Tenzin returns to the Teshi Menri Ling Monastery, where he spent the first half of his life as a monk. It was here that Tenzin came to understand that any dream, no matter how real and compelling, is always only a projection of his own thoughts. The conscious reality of our waking world is equally imaginary, and all human problems derive from attaching meaning to what are only mental illusions. If one does not understand everything as illusion, things which we see as real, we are caught into those realities. We are not able to liberate from them. To appreciate that life is an illusion, Tibetan Buddhists must learn to become mentally vigilant and self-aware during both dreaming and waking life. This rigorous training starts at an early age. When I was 10 years old, I entered this monastery and I became a monk and stayed it for 15 years. Like Tenzin before them, these young monks are presenting themselves to the abbot for religious instruction. The abbot will listen to their recent dreams and use them as a kind of spiritual barometer which shows the condition of their souls. The nature and content of their dreams, he tells the boys, will determine the level of teaching they are ready for. The blue string is a reminder to be mindful during the day, and the kasha grass for placing under the pillow at night will induce a dream which they must recount before their next lesson. For us, dream is very important. One third of our life, we sleep. So it is very important to discover what is happening emotionally in our night. That is the place where you can discover yourself better. Therefore, dream practice is very important. Just as the dreaming mind must be exercised, so too must the waking mind. For mental agility, monks practice together daily, furiously debating the doctrine of their religion. They move their arms in order to energize their body. When they hit their hands, they believe there is a channel there which sharpens their mind. A sharp mind must be maintained during sleep as well, where a monk trains in dream awareness so that he can confront the illusions of his dreams. Just before you fall asleep, you try to remember all the experiences of the daytime and remind yourself that these are dreams. When we do our dream practice, we have four sessions, which includes four different positions, four different ways of focusing. The position you sleep has influence on the breathing, and the breathing has influence on your mind. Because without the breathing, or we call prana, the mind has no function. Through practice of the control of energy or breathing, once you have that experience, then it is very easy to realize the dream, and you can control. <laughs> 
His Holiness the Dalai Lama is the spiritual leader of the Tibetan Buddhists. As the 14th reincarnation of their original great teacher, this Dalai Lama has unbroken memories of several recent earthly lives. And so his own dreams permit him an unusual perspective. I'm quite skeptical towards my own dream. Generally, dream is a dream. So not at all, not at all is it reliable. No, no meaning. Just, just, just come. Then occasionally you you might get some some dream which, which can, take, seriously. I met the fifth Dalai Lama in my dream, and also the, some previous important Lama, some uh, a few centuries ago. But that's not quite rare. The fifth Dalai Lama of the 17th century was famous for attending to his dreams and shares with this successor an enthusiasm for preserving the ancient Tibetan Buddhist practices. This monastery still performs the original sacred bone Tibetan dances. In this annual ceremony of the 29 female protective deities, the monks take on the spirits embodied in the masks and dance to enact the triumph of benevolent forces over evil. These masks are representation of the guardian protectors. When I'm dreaming and when I need help, I often call my guardians to help, and particularly things which I cannot do by myself or when I'm awake. When one is aware that one is dreaming, you can change things, a lot of things that you cannot do in during the waking state. Being aware of a dream while dreaming it is called being lucid. For Buddhists, this is a prerequisite for enlightenment. When a monk learns to become conscious during a dream, to know he is in the midst of something unreal, he can then control the images. This way, he begins to realize that thoughts, whether conscious or unconscious, are all mental illusions. You must recognize dream's dream. When you're uh, sleeping, till you see, your memory remains there, conscious remains there, constantly so thinking, thinking, thinking. You actually realize, now I'm dreaming. Now that is important. A lucid dream is that you, while you're dreaming, through your practice, that you know you're dreaming, and then you know it's a dream and you can change things. Tenzin's favorite example is a lucid dream which allowed him to do the impossible, to fulfill a request from his dead mother. She came to him in his sleep, asking for a memorial shrine, a stupa. In Tibetan tradition, it is very important if somebody dies that you build something for them, it can be stupa, a statue, or sacred text. So stupa represents that. It's called sign of rebirth, Chita. I was in Italy, and I had a lucid dream with my mother exactly a year after she passed away. We were here in Dolanji, under the Bodhi tree, and she seems very sad. She wanted me to build a stupa. I was very aware that I was in Italy, so it was very difficult to build it there. I thought that I could ask the help of a lot of guardian protectors. I looked up into the clouds near the tree, and I saw a lot of animal-headed guardians, like Garuda, the mystic bird, lion, parrot, and they agreed to help. I hear a sound, enormous sound. Together with the sound, the tree was transformed into the stupa. And my mother seemed to be happy. And I felt very good afterward, which I didn't feel before dream. It was like it, I couldn't make that stupa for her while I was in Italy. But in dream, I made it. Tibetan Buddhists believe that the experience of the dream is the same as that of the soul right after death, or what they call the bardo state. This is why consciousness in dreaming is so important. There's a strong connection between the dream and the pardo state. 
the period of intermediate state of the death, when we fall asleep, we are in touch with ourselves. That means in a Pardo state, one can be aware of oneself during the process of the death. The intermediate or Bardo state is a dreamlike condition occurring right after death which confronts the soul with blissful and horrific images. If a monk has mastered lucid dreaming, he can see the intermediate world for what it is, just his own thought forms and a mental illusion. Without mastery of his dreams, he will not perceive the illusion and his soul will reincarnate instead of achieving everlasting bliss. If you gain that experience through practice, through training, then that we usually call clear light. Now I'm in the state of dying. So once you, you gain that experience, or then the intimate state, very easily you can remember.